Okay. Correct. Thank you, uh, Ras Kiancola. Uh, Minister, I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a bit confused in relation to the government's position uh, on this particular bill. I mean, given the controversy we've just gone through around overruns, the potential impact it's going to have on the Exchequer, 450 million. I mean, that's also a fact. It's an overrun of 450 million. Um, and without getting into a blame game tonight, because I want to concentrate on the bill, I would agree with my Fianna Fáil uh, colleagues in the House tonight that by abstaining on this bill, it is sending out the completely wrong message uh, by this government. Now, ourselves and Fianna Fáil have huge differences on how we should approach this issue, but I'm more than willing to work with Fianna Fáil when they bring forward a proposal to try and address some of the concerns and how we can rectify it. And I would hope that they will do the same if we bring forward proposals. But I would have honestly have thought that the government would be falling over itself to work with opposition parties to try and restore some confidence in the procurement process that this state implies. And by abstaining on this particular piece of legislation, I think it sends out a completely wrong message. We will be supporting the bill. Um, I have one small concern in relation to it, um, and it's something that you referenced yourself, Minister, in relation to uh, the uh, Section 9A2. Um, and if I can just get it up there, it's, um, in my opinion, first of all, you said that this bill uh, imposes no new powers on the CNAG. I, I disagree with that. I think Section 2 or 9A2 is an implicit new power on the CNAG because it compels him or her, whoever it may be at that particular time, but him in this case, to examine any cost overruns on projects. It's my understanding, and maybe you can correct me, that there is no implicit um, power on the CNAG to examine cost overruns. Um, and this actually is very implicit, that it says if there is cost overrun, the CNAG would carry out an audit of that and uh, lay a report uh, to the, before the Houses. So for me, that is a new power. It is a new power. I do have a slight concern around the final bit of that, which is the power given to the Minister to actually prescribe the regulations and the conditions um, which would require such an examination to be carried out. I do have some concerns about that. I mean, the role of the CNAG is a constitutional role, uh, and I'm not 100 per cent certain uh, I would like maybe to get some further legal advice in relation to that, whether that will actually be impinging on his powers by giving powers to a minister to direct him how to carry out particular audits. Uh, but I think, without a doubt, there is a new um, power being bestowed on the CNAG in relation to what's being proposed here tonight, and we will be supporting it, and we will deal with that little aspect of it at committee stage. Um, but to try and suggest that you don't even want it to get it to the committee stage, it just beggars belief, Minister, to be honest, given everything that's after happening in the last number of weeks. I mean, we, we should all be working together on whatever proposals come forward from whatever side of the House to try and improve the procurement process. One of the things which has really highlighted for me over the last number of weeks is the deficiency um, in our procurement process. It's just not up to scratch. It's not up to standard. I mean, to have a situation where you are almost compelled to accept the lowest bid, regardless of how low that bid is, for fear of ending up on the steps of the four courts is not a good way to deal with procurement, and it has to be addressed. And I raised it last week at the Health Committee when I put it to the uh, Secretary-General and the Minister around 
what is known in EU regulations as abnormally low tenders and how they are dealt with by a number of uh, European counterparts, where they actually put it into legislation. They define what an abnormally low tender is and it gives them the power to disqualify the lowest bidder without fear of recourse uh, to legal challenge because it's in statutory legis uh, uh, law and it outlines exactly defines it. The other issue which is kind of baffling me at the moment is that when a, a contract is put out for tender and the bids come in, that you are prevented, you cannot, you, you are prohibited, and I got this confirmed at the Finance Committee today, you cannot look at any contractor who is bidden. You cannot look at their past performances. You cannot take into account their reputation. You are prohibited from assessing that while assessing the tender before you. And I think that's wrong. And I think that needs to be addressed. And again, it can be addressed, Minister. There are EU guidelines in relation to procurement which deals with all of these issues. And we have chosen to ignore them. That is the reality. We deal with procurement through a number of SIs, which transpose those regulations into secondary legislation. We now need to have a complete review of those um, regulations and see if we can put them on a statutory footing. And to be helpful, Minister, we actually published a bill tonight to help you do that. So we've actually defined in our bill what a statutory or what a, an abnormally low tender would be. The process which be, would be undertaken if one comes in, there would be an onus on the contracting authority to actually examine the tender, to bring the contractor in, go through all of the figures, and if, we, if there is a genuine belief that that tender cannot fulfil what it's bidden for, then we would have the scope and the powers to actually exclude it without any fear of uh, recourse to legal um, challenge. And we also, uh, in the bill, um, touched on the area of uh, performance and past performance and reputation. The bill is the Regulation of Tenders Bill 2019. I'll be moving it next week at first stage. I would be hoping to get the support of Fianna Fáil. Um, uh, and we we'll remain optimistic on that, but I think it's a genuine attempt by us, as it is tonight, by Fianna Fáil, to try and address some of the genuine concerns out there, Minister. So, Minister, while this bill is given powers to the CNAG to examine cost overruns, we need to get to a situation where we don't have those cost overruns, where we can nip them in the bud at the tendering stage and the procurement stage. And that's what our bill will be doing, is to try and nip those issues in, in, in the bud. I mean, we cannot have a situation, Minister, and I'm not going to name any contractors here tonight or any projects, but we cannot have a situation where a contractor consistently underbids for state contracts, consistently for some of the major contracts that this state has given out and ends up coming in, costing more, in some cases, costing more than what the highest tender bid was. It cannot carry on. It just cannot carry on, because it is costing us hundreds of millions. In this case, it has cost us 450 million, and it needs to stop. And as I said, I believe that the, what Fianna Fáil have proposed here tonight is a genuine attempt to try and address some of those concerns we will be supporting it in good faith. I'm absolutely disgusted, and I just can't understand why the government are not lending their support to this. Even if you have concerns about it, you should be supporting it. We should be united in our voices in here tonight, saying that we are going to address this issue once and for all, no matter who's in government. I mean, I think it was pretty childish of you, Minister, given the circumstances, to stand up and then throw stuff at Fianna Fáil about you know, when they were in government and the overruns that they, they oversaw. I mean, we need to get away from this. We, we honestly need to get away. The general public don't care 
whether you're in government, we're in government, or Fianna Fáil are in government. An overrun is an overrun, and they end up paying for it in the long run, and it needs to stop, because people are losing faith in, in this process, and we need to fix it now. And we have a very small window in order to do that. So, Minister, I would ask you to be more open to suggestions which will be coming forward from other opposition parties uh, than you were tonight in relation to the Fianna Fáil Bill. And I would ask you to consider actually supporting it on Thursday during the voting block and leave it go at the committee stage. And all of the concerns you raise, let's address them at committee stage. As I said, I share one of those concerns with you, but I just think it's sending out the wrong message that the very first piece of legislation that's brought forward to try and address the issues that we've been talking about for the last number of weeks, that this House can't even bloody agree to send it to committee to allow us to address it properly. It's the wrong message, Minister.